Tintinabulation. Before the sky was a lordly obelisk, when the vanic verdant earth was simply haloed in watery breaths to helix to trail, we were wild together. The pleasures of ripe, of juice, of warm, were atmospheric. We grew strong and noble, so proud of each other, exalted by the praise of one so admirable, so lovely, so capable. I knew we would ever live to dazzle, to be in awe. Lover twins, we dwelled in honor together under the ocean of our ancestors' air as they stood around us, a food forest home. We meet now under the telescopic sky, under layers of stories of untellable, infinite, unknowable horror replaced with layers of lies, layers of putrid bodies, poison land, acid skies. The water runs out of our hands remembering us. The water must be confused. We come to each other confused. I stand on the ground in front of you, but you do not see me. You stand on the ground in front of me, but you are infatuated with the sky. The monolith speaks to you in quiet tones. It purrs to you that you can have anything. You can do anything. That you can be anything. But it is not true. You have forgotten what is true. You would like to be a sky god. You would like your name to outlive the sun and the glory of the better story than your life echo out inside that name forever. You would like sovereignty. You have forgotten that your name is a pattern older than the sun and that we are the truth's repercussion from the inside out. Now I remember, because the monolith does not speak to me. It shows me the world from behind your eyes and your hands instead. I learn about your God this way, from the things you tell me, from how you touch things, from how you don't see. I have come here for you, but you do not recognize me, and I do not expect this to be painless or easy. I have forgotten some things too things that only you remember. But I cannot tell when you are lying, because you no longer know the difference between your voices. You don't know the truth to say it. You've grabbed me, tugged at me, taken from me, carelessly and without regard. You've plunged and prodded and pounded and pulled and plundered and pinned and punctured and pilloried. You've lied that you've mistaken me said that I desired, sought, and enjoyed all of those things. That you believed that. That I was so convincing. All of these things you do now. You push and overpower. And I wait for you to see me. You say you were selfish and greedy and need more and couldn't care less and that you were very visual. And I do not believe you. I hold you off as best I can and wait for you to see me. I know what I feel like under your hands. I have forgotten how to eat. I know what you see when you look at me. I have forgotten how to be inside myself. You say sex, but you mean rape, and you do not know this. With a whisper in your ear, you cannot tell the difference. I know what your initiative means for me. I have forgotten how to stop you. You are not a stranger. I do not want to hurt your feelings. You do not hear me wait. You do not see that you have hurt everything. You still say you see something convincing. You lie. But it is you. I can see you wondering. The whisper is gone, and a question turns over in your mind. You are not convinced. 
You say you were a thrall, that you were not my kin, that you were undeserving. And I do not believe you. I will. A murmur moves across your eyes and reclaims you. Again, you morph into a creature dwarfed by its own grandiosity, holding your hoard of treasured information hostage for the price of my body. You look at it and see nothing. I am here to take you home with me. Lost forest from my trees, I am no stranger to sacrifice. I cannot make you leave the sweet, loaded words that move your hands so predictably, so brutally. Then maybe I can help you remember. Remember body? You were standing in front of me. Under layers I believed. Layers of men who have convinced me. Their bodies cover you with plague. So pervasive. So sudden. So many brothers. Husks the voice had moved through. You say that you were one of them. That you were dead. That I do not believe you. I think you are buried in poison ground with the water rising. I think you must be so hungry. I stand on the bridge with my hand out for you. But you are confused. I am strong. I stand on the bridge with my hand outstretched in offering to you. I am the bridge to take you home under which you would hide and claim or destroy to keep from sharing, but I am brave. I stand over your mass grave and I offer you my hand. All around, there are the bells my sisters and I have left. Millions of little knots forming the cords that reach down to still bones. Billions of little twists making the threads to be knotted. Trillions of flowers, uprooted, soaked, threshed to be spawned into thread. So many lives. So many little things left behind in disbelief. All around me, silence. I put my hands in your hands that you might see them. Remember moon? Gibbous quick, crescent nail, motion without conquest, stillness without strain, grip, bond, hold, slide, caress, remember caress. I see you in there. I feel your vision flicker, knuckle, wrist, forearm, palm, story, crack, crevasse, crag. Caress. You feel my hand and try to remember caress. You cannot stand caress. You are on fire. The reaching light flares up and retreats. It does not let go. Here. Still here. It is so risky. <laughs> I offer heart. I put my hands on you in love, like the ward I could never do in defense. Your breast is a soft valley that seems endless and deep. Hair, skin, fat, muscle, bone, lung, heart. Remember heart. I'm looking into you. Who doesn't get stared at and takes being seen for granted? You see me by accident this way, in paralysis. I see you focus, a feel of pulse pulling life down into your body. I can feel your palms tingling, your shins crawling, your feet itching, your hair standing on end, your nipples go hard below the sides of my hands. An admonishment and gentle chiding lilt is fading in the background of you. It grows more frantic and volatile. 
moving you through jerky motions, you gradually still as it begins to shriek about being hard, being loyal, being brother. I begin to solidify in front of you. All the grotesque parts are floated down from dislocation into real. You are my brother. You cannot yet face what it means to be loyal. The thought races through you, and I let you face that alone, in your own time. At last, you are still. At last, you see the twin you have for so long forsaken for the fallacy of a coup. For there can be no replacement. Not for me. Not for you. You are my kin. My kind. And once we dwelled in honor together, content, and I would so dwell again. Your hands, once groping and possessive, now flounder with uncertain memory. Almost trustworthy. I take your face in my hands. Around your jaw like a chalice. My finger is a lacy fringe between your ears and eyes. Where I have so loved to see crinkles curl rolls into the pathways your lap of tears will take. Around your cheekbone. I touch my body to your body. So risky. I gaze into you. Damn broken. Our tears, an ocean of shaky breaths. Remember, soft, tender, a pool rippling at every touch. Sensitive. I know where you are sensitive. I caress you in ways you cannot touch yourself. I am careful with you, like you do not know to be careful with me. You remember hard. You are hungry. You are not yet trustworthy, but I am willing to risk, to sacrifice, to bring you back with me. And so I offer water. I set you adrift in one side pleasure. You cannot tell when I'm not convincing because you've only just noticed that I am there. My beauty is benevolence. A waterfall of hair to drown you in love. Remember water? I could feel you struggling upwards, life coursing through you now. You remember being in awe, starving. You were reaching for the cord to sound the bell. You remember my praise. You were reaching out to return the pleasures of ripe, of juice, of warm. You desired to delight. You were caressing me. You were slowing down to listen for me waiting. You were listening for the bell, hoping I will hear you from below. The voice destroyed. You were listening to me. We are together now. Our movements gentle with electric tension. Tiny ripples like shock waves of raw sense. Together arching. Together crossing. Together timeless in a rollicking void. Come with me, lover, lover, come back with me, come back with me. For once, we dwelled in honor together, and we would so dwell again.